Hi, second graders. This is Miss England. Today, I'm going to be teaching a lesson about 2D and 3D shapes and fractions. Before we begin, let's read our lesson objective. Ready? Begin. I can partition shapes into halves, thirds, and fourths and identify equivalent fractions. In this lesson, we'll review three things. We are going to first name and describe the features of 2D and 3D shapes. Second, we are going to practice partitioning shapes into equal parts. Remember that partition means to divide. Last, we're going to practice a skill you're going to use in third grade about finding equivalent fractions. The best way to remember the difference between 2D and 3D shapes is that 2D shapes are flat and 3D shapes are fat or three-dimensional. When we're talking about 2D and 3D shapes, especially 2D shapes, we describe them in three ways. We talk about this number of sides and the number of vertices. And then when we have 3D shapes, the number of sides, faces, and vertices. Let's review some 2D shapes. Ones that we all know, circle, triangle, square, and rectangle. Some new shapes we learned this year are a rhombus, a pentagon, which has five sides and five vertices, a trapezoid, which has four sides and four vertices, an octagon, which has eight sides and eight vertices, and a hexagon, which has six sides and six vertices. Another important skill we learned this year was the word quadrilateral. Quad means four, and a quadrilateral is any polygon, a flat shape with four sides. So a square, a rectangle, a parallelogram, and a rhombus are all examples of quadrilaterals. The 3D shapes we learned this year are a rectangular prism, a cube, a sphere, a cylinder, a cone, and a pyramid. When we are describing the parts of 3D shapes, we have a face, the flat part or the 2D shape, an edge, the side of the figure where the faces meet, and the vertex, the corner where three faces meet. So of the shapes that we learned, a cube has six faces, 12 edges, and eight vertices. A cone just has one face at the bottom, the circle zero edges and zero vertices. A rectangular prism, similar to a cube, has six faces, 12 edges, and eight vertices. A pyramid has five faces, eight edges, and five vertices. And a cylinder has two faces, the circles at the top and the bottom, and zero edges and vertices. Now we're going to go into our second part of the objective, talking about fractions. This year we learned a fraction is an equal part of the whole. We can describe it using the words numerator and denominator. The numerator is the part, the denominator is the whole. We can use fractions to describe a shape. We can use fractions to describe parts of a whole. One-fourth is white and three-fourths are green. We can also use fractions to describe parts of a set. In this set of smiley faces, three of the eight or three eighths are colored blue. Five eighths are colored yellow. Let's talk a little bit more about the numerator. The numerator is the number above the line that shows the number of parts being compared to the whole. In this example, Three parts are shaded, so the numerator is three. The denominator is the total number of equal parts. This is the number below the line. The circle is divided into six equal parts, so the denominator is six. This is an example of one of the practice problems from your week seven packet. It says, look at the shape, circle all statements that are true. A, the circle shows halves. B, the circle, the whole circle is one half. C, the parts of the circle are equal. D, the circle has two parts that are each one half of the whole. Now, all of these are correct except B. 
The whole circle is not one half. The whole circle is two halves. One half, two halves. Last, we're gonna talk about a new topic that you will use in third grade, equivalent fractions. Equivalent means equal. Equivalent fractions show the same amount. They're equal, but they have different numerators and denominators. When we're looking at equivalent fractions, they must be the same size and shape. In this example, we have two-fourths is equivalent or equal to one-half. We can see that from the picture. They're the same size, the same shape, and the same amount is shaded. But they have different numerators and denominators. This picture is not equivalent. The shapes are not the same size and shape, so we cannot compare those fractions. This is an example of a practice problem from your packet. Uh, the one shape is already shaded for you, one third. You have to shade to find the equivalent fraction to one third. So all you have to do is try and figure out how many of these ninths we need to color in to equal one third. When we do that, we find one third is equal or equivalent to three ninths. Another practice problem from your packet, you have to find out whether some of these fractions are equivalent or not equivalent. On this example, two sixths is equivalent to one third. When you shade in those two fractions, they show the same amount. However, four eighths is not equivalent to one fourth. You can see once you've colored them in, they are not the same. Now it's time for some practice. It's really important that you complete the pages in your week seven packet. These are some examples of what the pages look like. Another way to practice is to draw and label fractions of your own and find examples of fractions in your daily life. Like I ate half a sandwich. I ate one fourth of a pizza. There's lots of great 2D and 3D shape practice on IXL.com. And as always, please send a picture or a video of your learning to your teachers.